fate really put this all together. I had more books on diving, I think, when I was at school in Athens than I had on archaeology. I loved to read about it, everything by Cousteau, by Ansos, by Diolé, by these people. Okay. And uh, I just, but I never would have learned to dive. I just like to read about it. Rodney Young is about the only human being I cannot think of a critical word about. I just, I worship the guy. He was just absolutely wonderful. He'd asked me if I would like to excavate a site in Libya. And I said, well, I don't know any Arabic. You can learn. I don't know how to map a site. That's what you give an architect for you. I don't know anything. And I just kept saying, I, I'm not good enough. I can't possibly do it. And he said, if you don't grab the bull, by, I have to go into his voice, which came rumbling up from somewhere down here. Right. If you don't grab the bull by the horns, when you have the chance, you'll never get anywhere. So when I wrote my popular book, I had that. And I said, boy, when he offered me the chance to go to learn how to dive and do a bronze age shipwreck, I said, I grabbed the bull by the horns. Where did you learn to dive? In the Philadelphia YMCA with the <laughs> YMCA depth chargers. Really? And it was a 10 week course. And at the end of the sixth lesson, I said to Dave Stith, the instructor, can I try a tank on just once, please? Because I leave for Turkey tomorrow and the rig's 100 feet deep. So my entire experience with the tank on my back was 10 feet deep in a pool. Uh, I passed everything. And at the end of the summer, and this is really important, why I owe so much to Vladi and Claude, especially Claude. I, I was planning to go back to land archaeology, maybe do the lower levels at Gordian, right. which I talked about with, with uh, and, and Claude said, George, we've started something good now. We've got to continue this. You're the only one with the credentials to get a permit. Let's, let's come on, stay in this, and, and we'll go to Yasada next year. So we did. This, three years later, I was ordering the first ever commercially built research submarine from Groton, Connecticut, Electric Boat of General Dynamics. And it was launched in 64, you know, I was a kid. I was, right. The people who designed it, of course, were professional engineers, mm -hmm. electric boat, you know, building right. nuclear submarines and all that. And so <clears throat> you had to look out of six ports about that big. And I said, well, you want one just straight, but looking slightly down so you can you know, see where you're going. No, 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 you don't understand the difference between index of refraction of water, index of refraction of air, and they pull out their slide rules. That's before they're, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And so we had one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. And uh, we'll, we'll find wrecks with it, we'll survey with it, we'll map with it. And I developed with a Navy grant a way of mapping from the submarine. And so in half an hour, we did the same mapping a wreck that was taking us weeks to do with meter tapes and grids and photographs and all that stuff. So it, it all worked out. And when I write my memoirs, I really want to, uh, to emphasize that Peter deserves the credit more than me. He was the one that had the idea. I mean, maybe I implemented it by going with him. We floated a bar over the wreck so it was horizontal. We put a little piece of duct tape or something every so far apart, and we figured out the focal length of the camera. And we have to, did have to get into some stuff. And I worked with a, a former physicist from Eastman Kodak. He knew all about focal, focal lengths and so forth. And you slid the bar, the camera hanging on gimbals so it would always be hanging horizontally and with a, so you wouldn't have to touch it and take your pictures. And every two pictures makes a stereo pair. And we were able to do it. And the Navy was so impressed, they gave us a grant to develop doing this from a submarine with two strobe lights and all this stuff. And nobody said it was possible, but it was very easy to do it. You know, it was uh, simple, no problem at all. Those beautiful goldfish, big carp, I mean, that big, and nice, beautiful lilies out there. I mean, it was gorgeous. And they put the submarine, it, it was not in the water, but it was over the water, and something, the paint or the battery acid, something must have dripped down in it and killed all the fish. And I never got blamed for it. I, I, it wasn't my idea to put the submarine there, and I wasn't the one that, you know, designed the, the cradle for it and all that. But it was the submarine that killed the fish, and there's no doubt. Or unless they just died of fright seeing the monster fish up above them. When you came back to Penn after your work on the Cape Galadonia shipwreck, were you treated like a conquering hero? I mean, you had just started a whole new branch of archaeology. No, no. We, we were sneered at for many, many years. It was a real uphill battle. Um, yeah, you know, you, oh, you're going to go off and, and have fun in the Mediterranean again, swimming and lying in the sun. We want a historian, not a skin diver. 
I mean, we were really sneered at. And we just lived on beans and rice and tomatoes. And, and some days we ran out of food altogether and, and honestly dived with nothing to eat. Zero. I mean, Claude Dutrie said, what do we have today? And I said, we, t we took uh, anti-malarial pills. And I said that, and that was it. You know, maybe we had tomatoes or something. But it stopped diving if we sent a sponge boat off to bring food. And you weren't prepared to stop diving. That's right. Peter Throckmorton, to get his idea, said to me, uh, uh, you know, George, all this stuff we're finding at Cape Caledonia is supposed to go to the Izmir Archaeological Museum. It'll just end up in the basement. Yeah. said, uh, the townspeople of Bodrum deserve a museum of their own since they, their sponge divers are going to show us these wrecks. I never dreamed that, I mean, we have an institute now working around the world. We're in Vietnam, we're in the Caribbean, we're in the Yukon, we're in Turkey, we're in uh, Italy. We've been in Bulgaria, Israel, and right. Egypt. And it, it's rather incredible. And I've often said that you have to be young and ignorant and naive to get anywhere.